Sunday singing of the goodness of God. I just pray that every day of the week that we sing of the goodness of God because we are his creation, the canvas and the clay that he, he made us out of. It is. It's capo four, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. Excuse me. We have technical another difficulty. technical difficulty. We're so glad that y'all provide us with grace. Yeah, this is the family environment here, and guess what? We are not getting paid for this. Oh, please! <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a great deal. <laughs> it was my fault on that, not Catherine's. Cause in your mother's womb. For me with your hands, known and loved by you. Before I took a breath, when I doubted, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter, I'm the canvas and the clay. The words are great. You make all things work together. For my future and for my good, you make all things work together for my glory and for your name. There's a healing light just beyond.
your glory and for your name. When I doubt it, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. Cause you're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. I know nothing has been wasted. No failure or mistake. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Please be seated. Wow. So we wanted to open up a time where you guys could share uh, on this dreary morning, right? God's love and God's brightness and God's glory shines bright in this room, you know, because where his spirit is, uh, you guys are here and where his spirit is, is within you. And so we want to open up and say, uh, what is on your heart this morning? Uh, what would you like for the congregation, your family to keep in prayer or celebrations? Yes, thank you, Billy. Yes, keep our country, obviously, uh, in your prayers and the elections. And that we live in a place where we get to elect our elected our officials, right, our government. Uh, they're, not a, they're not a dictator appointed by somebody else. We are truly blessed. Somebody else had a hand up? Hey, Miss Bray. <laughs> Liberty University, well represented in the house today. Or graduates from Liberty. Who else? Amen. Hey, we're thankful you guys are back. Good to have y'all guys back. Who else? I love this. God loves this, the praises of his people. So a couple things. Uh, uh, y'all keep on thinking. Y'all come back around. A couple announcements. We'll stick in there. Uh, next week, after this service is over, we'll have a quarterly business meeting. So uh, you just have to hang back just a little bit. Uh, make sure the crock pot is set, you know, okay, and you can be uh, just a few more minutes, and you'll get back to it for, uh, for lunch. But um, so that and... Saturday, Friday night, Saturday night, Saturday night is Halloween, right? And so we're going to uh, try to serve our community through uh, trunk or treat. Uh, we want the little kitties to uh, come to a safe place, a place that um, we have prepared for them that uh, is uh, COVID-19 free. And uh, so, um, you know, we encourage you guys to uh, decorate your trunk or just come and hand out. We love to have you there. Uh, with masks going and individually wrapped candies, please, where the children can pick up their own gift instead of reaching into a big old pile of, like we used to, you know, and pull out all the chocolate stuff and leave the uh, apple in, the, in there. So that's what I used to do. Who else has a praise this morning? So I want to say uh, that um, God kind of, kind of spoke to me you know uh i don't know i kind of operate on i say what comes to mind and uh if it's a, a great thing or if it's a godly thing that i then i give all the credit to god if it's a not such a godly thing and i say it then it's all my fault so i give him all the credit for the godly things and so this morning um i got thinking you know um we're coming into a, a place together right where it says one or two are gathered there am i also right and so uh, we are singing his praises, right? We're singing and we are reading his word, right? And we are listening to the pastor. I'm going to tell you this, that somebody, somewhere, a life is being changed today. Because I do not believe that you could sing God's praises, that you could uh, study his word, that you could pray and, and be in relationship with him, and that somebody's life has not changed because of that. And so today, whether it's uh, somebody in this room, whether it's somebody on the video, whether it's yourself, I can guarantee you there's a life that is going to be changed today because God's power reigns over this world, right? And so there may be something that somebody is worried about that is released. There may be a sickness that somebody has that is made healed, right, or that has been healed. And so today you are, are part of 
a celebration that changes somebody's life. And if we came to church in expectation that God is going to change somebody's life today, we would run into that place, right? Because we want to be, I do, I want to be a part of God's working through the Spirit in people's lives. I want to be a part of that, right? Because being a part of it, guess what? Uh, there's a song that says, uh, it's an older song saying, you know, thank you. Uh, Ray Boats did it way back when, when most of y'all were just in your very young. But he says, thank you for giving to the Lord that what you did made a difference in my life. And guess what? I'm in heaven right now because of it, right? And so if we go into worship and praise with expectation that the Spirit is going to move, it gave me a different attitude this morning. So I just wanted to share that with you. Yes, come on. Amen. Amen. Steve. Amen. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Thank you, Steve. Amen. Who else? A word of praise this morning. Yes, it's Kathy. Mm. Yes, that is correct. That is a correct glory. Amen. Lord, what, you're, what you just spoke is truth in all of our lives. You just recognize it right now. But we cannot get to the next day without his help and his guidance, can we? Man. Yes, Lyndon. Man, we got it going on now. The Spirit's moving. Amen. Away, away children. I'll add one to my list on that, too. Parents' prayers. That's probably why I'm standing right here. <laughs> no, that is why. Amen. Who else? Yeah, Bill. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I already heard that word this morning from a good friend of mine, but I appreciate that word again. So the Lord is is uh, is so good to us. Look, we we are blessed. You know, if you want to receive a blessing, right? I guarantee you teach a Sunday school class. You come up here and you sing. You you serve God. Guess what? <laughs> you He gives you far more back than you could ever give to Him, right? And so. Um, so if you want to receive a blessing, step out in faith and, and teach a Sunday school class or lead singing or do whatever God has called you to do, and I guarantee you receive a blessing. Anybody else? I want that being said, there this are still is wonderful. multiple, multiple, positions, multiple available positions available to be blessed. There are multiple <laughs> positions to be On blessed. On committees and groups, yes. See, yes. see the insert in your <laughs> Yes, that's right. Who else? I don't want anybody feel like they were shut down. Well, I want to tell you what, family, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, your, your children 
have lift up your name in praise this morning. Your children have feeling the spirit moving inside their lives to say, you are all that we need. You are all that we have. This world, we are foreigners. We are aliens in this world, Lord. Our home is with you. And yet while we're down here, we're serving you. We're, you're, in, you're building us up. The spirit inside of us grows when we sing your praises, when, when we prayed in your name, when, when we are in commune with you, Lord. And so help us to do that more and more often. But as we go into days, as we continue this day's service, let the songs that we sing be sung from our hearts. Let our ears be open to hear your words spoken. Give our pastor the knowledge and the courage to speak words to us that we need to hear, Lord, words that you have given upon him, laid upon his heart. Help our ears to hear. And may we leave this place saying, it's been great to be in the house of the morning, this Lord. So we thank you for all your glory and all your praises and all your blessings. Amen. Stand if you would with us. And this song here, I'm going to mess up a lot, but you guys got to sing it. Help us out. Because I want to trade in my sorrow this morning for the joy that's found only in the Lord. Guess what? I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my dreams. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. COVID-19. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. All you gotta do is say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. That's it that easy. I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, that his joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrow, I'm trading my shame. Laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. All you gotta do is say, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Come on, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. He loves to hear it. Come on, sing it again. Say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, that his joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. Trading my sorrow, I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. How's that? I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Hey. I'm going to tell you, if you don't have joy in your heart, how can you change a world that is full, full of evil, right? you got to have the joy. You All can't you get joy do, for listening to Roy growling. Look, <laughs> technically, that song, that song was really bad, technically, but I appreciate y'all. <laughs> but this is going to be a good one. Our good friend Avery is going to sing, Yes, I Will, Lord.
the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God is never late, is working all things out, is working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Yes, we will, Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Back in the early 80s, there is a, a song that came out called Under Pressure. And it's a song by a British rock band called Queen. Anybody heard of them? And David Bowie? Okay. And the song reached number one on the UK singles chart, becoming Queen's second number one hit in their home country, and Bowie's uh, third number one hit. It had a unique bass line. For those that don't remember it, a little later there would be an artist that would use the same bass line and be sued for that. His name was Vanilla Ice, and the song was Ice Ice Baby, <laughs> if you remember that. But the lyrics started, pressure pushing down on me, pressing down on you. And I guess because there was so much pressure at that time, Billy Joel came out with a song the very next year called Pressure. Don't ask for help, you're all alone, he says, pressure. You'll have to answer to your own pressure. There's pressure coming, and I think there's pressure coming to the Christ follower, and it's going to come from the world. And I feel like we've been so up today. <laughs> it's like, this sermon might bring you down, so I'm sorry. So hopefully the, the closing song will bring you up again. You know? But there's pressure that's coming against us. And uh, we talked last week about you being a lump of clay, and some of us are a little more lumpy than others. Um, <clears throat> 
And it, it, that's what kind of dawned on me as I read a verse that, that uh, was from that sermon, and it stood out to me, just warning us that we will be under pressure as Christ followers. And, and maybe you don't feel it now, but it's coming. It's definitely coming as the world becomes more and more against the Christ followers. And so I'm going to look at the scripture this morning. It's from 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 10 is a whole um, passage or part that we'll be looking at. Um, but I'm going to start with verse 7. And this kind of finishes up where we were before because we are clay pots, according to this. Um, in verse 7, it says in chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. And I love that concept there. And we talked a little bit about that last week, that we are just clay pots. We are jars of clay. Remember the band, jars of clay? We are, we are jars of clay, clay pots, not much special to the outside of us, but we have a treasure, a precious treasure inside of us. And so, so on the outside, we may not look that different from the world, but on the inside, there is something very different if you are a Christ follower because you have Jesus Christ in your heart. You have the Holy Spirit living in you. You have the gospel in you. And that, God says, that Paul says, is a treasure within you. The gospel is a precious cargo that we carry around. I don't know that we realize that. Do you realize that probably the most important thing that you know in the world is the gospel? Because that's the one thing that gives you knowledge of what happens beyond this world. It's the one thing that when you accept it, you live eternally outside of this world. It's something that goes with us beyond here. And you, as a clay pot, carry that treasure of the gospel within you. And also it says here that it, it, although we're not that special because we're clay pots, we do carry this treasure. But that reminds us that that treasure is from God and not from ourselves. The scripture says there, it says um, that the power may be of God and not of ourselves. And, and what makes us special, what makes this treasure so special inside of us is not ourselves, but it's God. It's Christ living within us. It's a gospel within us that makes that treasure so Precious. It reminds us, and uh, Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 2 5, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And so I hope you're not trusting in Christ because of the things I say only. I mean, I try to speak the truth and preach the truth and all, but I hope it's because of God living inside of you, God's word transforming you. And not just because of something that someone said. In fact, I've said before, whenever I'm preaching, I've been known to say things wrong and maybe interpret things wrong. Go to the Word yourself. Check it out for yourself. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Because I believe the Holy Spirit will guide you in what His Word is saying. Don't just depend on me or depend on your Sunday school teacher or something that you've heard on TV. But we, we, we contain this precious treasure. And because of that, there will be a lot of pressure on us because... There is a whole world that doesn't want that precious treasure coming out. There's a world that doesn't want to hear the message. There's a world that doesn't want Jesus Christ to be in control. And so Paul goes on to say that we're these clay pots uh, with a precious treasure inside of us. But then he goes on to say that there's some hard times coming. There's some pressure coming. And he says, first of all, that we are hard pressed. We are hard pressed. Pressed. In the verse 8, it says, We are hard pressed on every side, and yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. He starts by saying, We are hard pressed. We are pressed um, from every side, from every direction. There are external pressures coming that will, that if they're not coming upon you now, they will be coming upon you in this world. Paul was writing about this because he was receiving affliction from every side. I mean, as long as he was a Pharisee and doing the Pharisaical things, that's the right word, things were fine for him. But once he started following Christ, man, everything changed for him. He received all kinds of persecutions and frustrations and afflictions and all. And he was receiving this, him and his team. And he said, you know, we are hard-pressed on every side, everywhere we go. We're seeing trouble. Everything we do, 
we're getting affliction, and it's coming. You know, when the Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Baird first came, when her name came up, the first thing that was said was, oh, she's a Christian. Can we have a Christian judge? I remember that, that being talked about. That's a scary thing. When they start saying, can a judge be a Christian? Are they too biased to be a Christ? I mean, it might be pretty soon that the government offices and court judges will not be able to be held by Christians. Probably be able to be held by Muslims, but not Christians. So, Nick that from the video. <laughs> from the video. But attacks on Christians are going to increase and, and keep increasing because they don't want Christ followers. They don't want to hear the message of the gospel. They don't want to hear the word of God coming into the politics of the country, into the government. They don't want that influence coming in. We want to do what we want to do. It reminds me of the Old Testament where it says that they did what was right in their own eyes. That's what the world wants to do. That's what our our a uh, country wants to do, wants to do what's right in our own eyes, not in the Word of God. And so there's pressure coming. But Jesus reminds us in, in uh, John 1, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, talking about the world, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So all of this, throughout all this, remember that verse, that he who is in you, the treasure in you, he that is in you, is greater than he that is in the world. Because there are things coming up where we're going to wonder, God, are you really greater than the things of the world? Because why am I going through what I'm going through if you're greater than the world? Well, Paul goes on to say that we are hard-pressed in verse 8 on every side, yet not crushed. We do not collapse under the pressure, but God will uphold us. I mean, it's so easy to collapse. It's so easy to give up when the pressure comes. You know, uh, and many have fallen away from serving Christ just because it's too hard in the world. We, we see that not just now, but back in biblical times. When Jesus teaches and got too hard, the people just left. They go, hey, we can't handle this. And it's happening today, too. I mean, look at our churches. Look how small they are compared to me. We have these beautiful sanctuaries throughout our state, throughout our county, throughout the world that are, you know, only partially filled because so many have dropped out because they don't want to follow Christ. They don't want to follow the word of God. They want to do their own thing. There are many that are feel crushed by the society and by peer pressure and, and that kind of thing. And and collapse underneath it. But Paul says that we're hard-pressed, but we're not crushed. We don't have to collapse in on ourselves. Psalm 37, 17 says, For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Yes, yeah, it's not going to be easy, but God will uphold us. Even in the midst of, of the hard pressure that's coming, God will uphold us. In Isaiah 41, 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Remember that. Through all this and all that's coming, God says, Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God will hold us, keep us from being crushed. He'll surround us with his arms. As the world presses down on us, the Father will uphold us. Secondly, Paul, and remember, he's, he's telling us, he's telling the church, really, but he's reminding them of what he and his team are going through. So he says that, that they're hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. And then he says that we are perplexed. We are perplexed. He says we are perplexed, but not in despair, in verse 8. Perplexed is a state of confusion, kind of at this, God, why are you allowing problems to come against us. And, and we do ask that, don't we? We wonder, God, if I'm following you and doing everything that you tell me to do, why is this coming up against me? Why are there pressures coming up against me? Why are there persecutions coming up against me? Why are people treating me the way I am? Why is there affliction? We wonder. There's confusion there. 
Paul's team saw no way out of their situation. They were starting to get discouraged. And so they found that they were perplexed, wondering, why God? 2 Corinthians 7, 5 says, For indeed, when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest. We were troubled on every side. Listen to this. Outside were conflicts. Inside were fears. There's a sense in which when we look into the future, and we do look at, at the world really turning against Christianity, there's, there's conflicts we see coming, but do we fear on the inside? Or are we perplexed and discouraged at times, wondering why we would go through this and how we will handle the pressure that's coming upon us? Do you just ever ask God, why? God, why? Why this? If I'm trusting in you and living for you the best that I can, why am I being attacked by those around me? Why are school friends against me and, and tempting me to do things that I shouldn't? You know, why is the world against me? Why are things going on at work and they seem to be coming against what I know to be right and challenging me to do things that are wrong? It's easy to become discouraged when you're constantly under attack of this world. The, the psalmist wonders to God also. In Psalm 94.3, says, Lord, how long will the wicked, and then he does it again, how long will the wicked triumph? Don't we wonder? God, if you're in control, and I know that you are, how long will the wicked triumph? See, we, we only get to see a little snapshot of what's going on in the world. I mean, if you want to jump ahead, go to Revelation. God wins in the end. But we haven't reached there yet. And in our little snapshot, it seems like the, the, the wicked are triumphing. It seems like the, the world seems to be in control. It seems like Satan seems to be winning. But we know the outcome down there. But we only get this little part of it. And we wonder, why is this going on the way it is? And it'd be easy to be in despair. But Paul says we're perplexed in verse 8. But not in despair. We're not in despair. We're not at the wit's end. We're not without hope. They didn't allow the confusion and discouragement. Um, they, didn't, they didn't allow the confusion, excuse me, to lead to discouragement because they knew that God was fully in control. They were stressed out, but not they were stressed, but not stressed out, excuse me. And our hope is in Jesus Christ that even in the midst of what's coming, we can stand up secure because Christ is in control. He will help us stand. That is the treasure inside of us. That is what's going to give us the power. In 2 Corinthians 1, 5, in the NIV, it says, For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. We will suffer because of Christ. We'll see that in a few minutes. But also... Christ gives us that comfort that even in the midst of this, I mean, Paul went through so much, but he was content in what he was going through because he knew that Christ lived in him and God was in control and his power would bring him through what all he was going through. The pressure can cause confusion, but not despair because God is still in control. And as long as we keep that in mind, we realize that we can make it through What's coming? God's in control. Paul goes on to say that not only are we hard-pressed and not only are we perplexed, but we're persecuted. We are persecuted, he says. In verse um, 9, he says, we are persecuted but not forsaken. Paul's team faced persecution. Their enemies pursued them like fugitives, waiting for them to slip up. That's how it was with Jesus also. Pharisees constantly watching him, just waiting for him to slip up that they could jump in. And you know, people are doing that to us also. If they know that you're a Christian, they're just waiting for you at work, at school, or in the community to slip up. They say, hey, look what you did. It's a great opportunity to say, yeah, I'm human also. And, and I ask for God for forgiveness, and he'll, he'll forgive me. You know, but people are looking for us to slip up. You know, Jesus promised persecution. And that's kind of the scary thing. I, w- I wished everything was just hunky-dory. And some of the TV preachers just tell you, just follow Christ and your life will be set, you know, forever. I don't read that in the gospel. <laughs> you know, in fact, sometimes I wonder why we follow Christ, but I look what's coming, 
except that we know that he is the way to eternal life. He is the precious treasure. And John 15, 20 says, Remember the word that I said to you. This is Jesus speaking. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Just as if they had kept my word, they would have kept yours also. And he said, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. As Christ followers, if we're following Jesus and he was persecuted, we would expect to receive persecution also. Sometimes our witness isn't strong enough for him that we even receive persecution, but that's a whole other thing. You can look within your heart for that. I mean, Jesus would go on to say, in a crazy thing, on the Sermon on the Mount that we studied a few months ago, that, that those who are persecuted are blessed. He's like, what? Yeah. Blessed are those who are persecuted. He said in Matthew 5, 10 through 12, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. What? Jesus, really? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And you do. You go through the old, I'm reading through the Old Testament, and the prophets were persecuted. Anyone who's following God in this world will be persecuted. It started back from the beginning, and it will continue until he comes back. We will be persecuted. It's part of the Christian walk. Paul put it this way when he was describing it to young Timothy. Paul was coaching, encouraging, helping um, uh, Timothy, the young pastor, and he said to him in 2 Timothy 3.12, Yes, and all who desire to live godly lives, excuse me, to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Well, that's a great one to put on a bumper sticker. <laughs> Follow me and you'll be persecuted. You know what it says? You know, those who want to live godly lives will suffer persecution. But he goes on to say that we're persecuted, but not forsaken. We are persecuted, but we are not alone. See, that's, that's the problem. Sometimes when we get into trouble, we start to think we're a lot alone. You know, you see that in depression also. All of a sudden you think, you know, I'm alone. I'm the only one going through this and that kind of thing. But let me remind you, yes, as Christ followers, we will be persecuted, but we are not alone. First of all, we have the congregation. We have the church of Christ. But even more than that, we have Christ himself. We're not alone. God will never desert us or abandon us. We do not stand by ourselves as we stand up under this persecution. In Romans 8, 35, Paul says, Who will separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress, persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword. Now, nothing, nothing can separate us from Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, Be strong and be of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. God is with us the whole way. There's no reason to be afraid. There's no reason to fear. We can be strong even in the midst of persecution. Hebrews 13, 5 uh, it says, For he himself, talking about Jesus, will, said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then, of course, in uh, Matthew 28, 20, Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always to the even, to the end of the age. He's with us. We're carrying him around. Again, he is the precious treasure. He's the treasure inside of us. That brings us through all this persecution and all that we're going through. And finally, Paul says that we're hard-pressed, we're um, perplexed, we're persecuted. And finally, he says that we're pushed down also. He says in verse 9, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. Struck down. Paul's team, his enemies hunted them. They hunted them down and physically hurt them. And like wounded warriors, they were down, but they were not out. You remember Walter Payton? On a Monday night football game <clears throat> between Chicago Bears and New York Giants, one of the announcers observed that Walter Payton, the Bears' running back, had accumulated over nine miles in career rushing yardage. Nine miles in yardage. The other announcer remarked, yeah, 
And that's with someone knocking you down every 4.6 miles. I'm sorry, 4.6 yards, excuse me. Walter Payton, one of the most successful running backs ever, knows that everyone, even the best, gets knocked down. The key is to get up and run again just as hard. Yes, as Christians, we'll be pushed down, pushed back, be pushed over at times, but we don't have to stay down. Paul goes on to say, yes, we are pushed down, we are struck down, but we are not destroyed. It's just a small setback. They were, Paul, Paul and his uh, team were knocked down, but not knocked out. Like a wrestler, they were thrown down to the mat, but they were not counted out. And the scripture reminds us that even in the midst of being knocked down, that the Lord will lift you up. I like that concept of just, you know, you're knocked down, God grabs you by the collar and lifts you up, dusts you off. Come on, keep going. And Psalm 37, 24 says, Though he fall, he shall not be able to cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Psalm 147, 6 says, And the Lord lifts up the humble, he casts the wicked down to the ground. In James 4.10, James writes, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. When we are knocked down, the Father picks us up. I love that scripture. I used it yesterday. I did a funeral yesterday. I love the scripture where we're in heaven, and it says that God wipes away every tear from our eyes. I love the idea of God touching our face, wiping away the tear from our eyes. And I love the idea of God seeing us down and lifting us up, standing us back up, giving us a hug. Then he turns us around. I don't know if you can do that nowadays, but he pats us on the butt and goes, keep going. I like that concept. The physical touch of God saying, hey, I'm going to support you. I'm going to carry you. I'm going to get you through. God, the precious treasure living in you. Which brings us to the next point, that we have a precious treasure inside of us. Paul writes it this way, and it sounds kind of weird here in verse um, 10. He talks about being um, hard-pressed and on every side not crushed, perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but uh, not forsaken, struck down and not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. The concept of always carrying around the, the body of the dying Christ. Kind of we're carrying around that idea that Christ died for us as we are hard pressed and perplexed and persecuted and pushed down we remember that what christ did for us we carry that around what christ did for us that he died for us he was persecuted for us again john 15 20 says jesus says remember the word that i said to you a servant is not greater than his master if they persecuted me which they did they will also persecute you Remember that he went through persecution for us. In Philippians 2, 8, it says, Being found in the appearance of man, talking of Jesus Christ, he himself humbled, uh, humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Christ died for you and me. And if he died for us, I think we can stand some persecution here on earth. Philippians 1 29, Paul writes, For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. That if Christ suffered, we will suffer also and and be willing to suffer. If he died for us, we should be willing to suffer for him. And Peter felt the same way in 1 Peter 2, 21. For to this you were called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps, being willing to suffer for him. I don't know when it will come or how it will come. I think we're seeing signs of it now. But there will be a time where it will be so unpopular to be a Christ follower that we will find ourselves suffering. In Matthew 10, it says, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. That's a scary thing. To be hated because we are Christians, Christ followers. 
But he goes on to say that we carry around the dying body of Christ, if you will, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. And this is the treasure we suffer for and along with Christ, that he might be glorified. I want others to see Christ in me. And so we, we are persecuted, we are perplexed, we are uh, pushed down, we are uh, hard-pressed because we're, we're following Christ. And others see that and wonder how we'll respond. Do we come out fighting or do we stand for the glory of Christ? Remember, we are jars of clay, but we carry the most precious treasure of the whole world, Jesus Christ in our bodies and the gospel in our bodies. And yes, as Christians, we are under pressure. But Henry Kissinger said, a diamond is just a chunk of coal that did well under pressure. I like that. First, you're a lump of clay last week. You're a lump of coal this week. <laughs> but under pressure, you can shine like a diamond, as the song goes. That's amazing. And let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Yeah, we're, we're jars of clay, but we have a precious treasure inside of us. We're under pressure. But under pressure, we can shine forth the light of Jesus Christ. It's all about him. It's not about us. And when we're persecuted and hard-pressed and perplexed and pushed down, it's not about us. It's about serving him. When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and said, you're my Lord. You sit on the throne of my life. I serve you no matter what. You are my master. And if it, had caused, if it causes suffering for me, then I will because you are in control of my life. So being a Christ follower is not, it's not going to be easy in the days to come. As Paul said, we are hard-pressed but not crushed. We are perplexed but not in despair. We are persecuted but not forsaken. We are pushed down or struck down and not destroyed. We only may be clays of jar, I mean clay jars, but we contain the most valuable treasure in the world, Jesus Christ. And that's what the world needs to know. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for your love for us. A love that was so great that you endured persecution on this earth and you end endured death on a cross for us. How can we think that following you would just be a, an easy day-by-day -day thing where everything is just beautiful and easy? Christ, you said that if, if they persecuted you, they'll persecute us. And Father, I think we can see that coming. We definitely see it throughout other parts of the world. We have it e easy right here as, as Christ followers in the United States. But there are those that are in jail. There are those that are dying. Those whose families are persecuted because they are Christ followers. And Father, it may very well soon be like that here also. But, Father, we can withstand that because we know that you're in control and you're by our side. Father, maybe there's someone here this morning that hasn't accepted you as Lord and Savior. This might be a message that would keep them from doing it, or they might realize that there's nothing greater in the world than knowing you, trusting your Son as Lord and Savior, and knowing that we have eternity with you in heaven. I pray if there's someone that needs your need your lordship in their life, that today will be the day that they ask you to be Lord of their life. Father, there might be those that have trusted you as Lord and, or have accepted you as Lord and Savior, but just aren't living like it, haven't allowed you to be um, in control of their life. <coughs> Father, I pray today they'll make that commitment to trust you, no matter what it takes, no matter what they'll go through, they'll put you first in their life, even if it causes persecution or suffering. And Father, I pray for those that are going through hard times as Christ followers, that we will use it as an opportunity to glorify you as we stand strong for you, trusting you, knowing that you're fully in control. Father, we may just be jars of clay, but we do have the most precious, tr precious treasure in our hearts, and that's your Son. In his precious name we do pray. Amen. Stand with us if you would. Let us sing a song to the Lord. 
Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Yes, He is Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for You Ah, oh, we live for You Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one we could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Ah, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes. above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you only there is no one like you there is none beside your children as they leave this place today let them speak boldly let them love greatly and let them forevermore praise your holy name it's always in your name we pray amen go out and tell somebody about the greatness of jesus christ holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes